Hello, my name is Ben Cherry and I'm here to talk to you about personal projects. So I usually work in TV, so working for production companies as a, primarily a wildlife cameraman. And uh, my involvement in that, on the day, out in the field, uh, filming something, hand over the rushes, and that's usually my end of an involvement. So I really like to challenge myself when I have some spare time, like now for instance, to try and come up with a personal project angle which I can do from start to finish. So something which I can really make into my, my own little baby and ultimately something to learn from. I've done this with a few different projects now and the one I've just released is called Guardians of Uwahuka and that's uh, based in French Polynesia. I was asked to join two Oxford University scientists who were doing some research work out there on a voluntary basis. And uh, I jumped at the chance because it was the opportunity to make a short film and to make it about two birds which are critically endangered and you only find them in one particular island. The project itself has taken ages and it's been an amazing learning experience for me. So we filmed it back in August, September 2018. Uh, I was out there for just over three weeks and we had to balance um, our commitments between the actual research the uh, scientists were doing out there in documenting the birds around different parts of the island to our community um, responsibilities to then eventually film it. And for me, what was really interesting was coming up with the um, angle of the story in the first place. So we've got this amazing location, you know, what, what's gonna be the hook? What we gonna, how are we gonna um, hone this story into something hopefully engaging and not just about two little obscure birds, which is quite difficult to build, you know, a really strong narrative around. Um, as, as wonderful as they are, you know, trying to film them takes a long time to make a really good behavioural sequence. So it became quickly apparent how amazing the culture, the Marquesan culture is, uh, and how prevalent it is on the island, and how proud everyone is of it. So, and how that really twins together with the wildlife, you know, this whole idea of living off of and with the wildlife and nature around you, you know, I thought it was very poetic and beautiful. Um, so that's really what kind of brought our short film together. And to make it, you know, slightly more difficult for myself, we decided to use the local language of Marquesan uh, to be the language which is spoken in the film. So I wrote a script in English. Um, with my colleagues and then we got that translated to French and then Tahuna, our character, then uh, read this out in Marquesan. So we've been toing and froing with, you know, making sure the translations are right and everything's working all okay. And um, and that was the first real lesson I learned from, from that personal project was having a focus, but also having flexibility, you know, taking an idea and going with it, 
but also allowing yourself a little bit of uh, flexibility in post. So I did quite a specific script and had a really good idea of how I wanted the narrative to flow and had pitched together how I was going to piece the visuals. And of course that evolves over time. Uh, you know, you realise that some things work better in different orders. And what I should have done is I should have got some stuff around that script to help me broaden the story if and when I needed it. And of course that was made very difficult by going across three languages. Yeah, that was quite a challenge. And next time I'd definitely be looking at how I can, you know, whether it's just getting a character, whether it's in English or a foreign language, just to, to talk a bit more about the topic you're focusing on. And then if you have to get it transcribed by someone who speaks that language, then that's fine. But um, that's definitely something I took from this, you know, having, it's great with personal projects, you know, being able to follow your heart and follow what you want to create. But also, you know, if you have the ability to give yourself some flexibility so that, you know, something can evolve in post, then it's incredibly helpful. Tomato akakai. A ipatu ye hiri. Ea ao ve e ia mai. Yo he ki. Yo he hakakai. Yo he patutik. Personal projects don't have to be fancy, remote, exotic, um, really pushing boundaries. They can be really simple and local and homely and, you know, back to basics. Um, and I'm doing a few things around, around where I am at the moment locally just for fun, you know, keeping it lighthearted and keeping it simple and just enjoying doing some shooting for me where I can and, and when possible with, with the kit I have with me. But for me, most of my stuff is kind of documentary orientated or nature orientated. So I need to keep my equipment as light as possible. So I often use hybrid cameras. So this is where the likes of the Panasonic S1H are just awesome. If I'm using the camera handheld, I might decide to just use the EVF, which is amazing on this camera, and I could still be recording to the Atomos, or I can be recording internally. But I usually like having a really bright screen, and the Ninja 5 is the perfect size, really, to be using on the S1H. And so being able to get you know ProRes HQ 4K 60p out of this, it's fantastic and I cannot wait to see uh, what you can do with the ProRes RAW coming to this very, very soon. Um, so for me, this is a really strong personal projects camera for the kind of uh, work I like to do. And what makes that even more interesting is the ability that this is a, a full frame sensor. Um, so being able to swap between full frame Super 35 is great for me. You know, I really like using wide angle lenses on full frame sensors, so like the 24 or other lenses I've got like an 18, a 21 millimeter. Using those actually at their native focal lengths as it were. So then, you know, my big wide establishers are big wide establishers, not, you know, slightly cropped in if I was using the Super 35 variant on them. So I really like that. But then at the other end of the scale, being able to use, you know, my 60 to 600 Sigma on this and use that Super 35 crop for still exceptional 4k output to get that uh, longer reach I need sometimes with wildlife. One of the main things for me which I've learned from these projects is the importance of workflow. So being able to have the Atomos SSD downloaded onto two um, portable bus powered SSDs uh, with large capacities uh, for speedy convenience so that in the field those can be downloaded straight away then make sure from those SSDs it's um, downloaded onto higher capacity hard drives, which again would be duplicated and then um, ultimately would be the hard drives I'd then probably run the edit from. So uh, that's often what I work from. So I've got a MacBook Pro and whether it's the G-Speed shuttle, which though big is still relatively portable to take around with me. And even though on the Guardians of Uwahuka I could have used a regular GH5, uh, which does have really good IBIS, 
Um, I opted for the GH5S just to have that slightly better high ISO performance, uh, which was helpful in some circumstances. But um, in hindsight, I definitely missed having that IBIS in camera, which could have been really helpful. But as well as that, I definitely put more time aside for picking up more audio recordings, whether that's via an external mic system or getting a better onboard mic on the camera and just making sure I'm recording more scratch, uh, scratch audio. <laughs> Being such a big screen, it's really easy to show people um, what I'm filming. So if I'm working with people who don't speak, um, if we don't speak a common language together, then I can show them some footage which I'm doing, if it's, if it's working with them or working with some of their friends or working on the project in general and I want to show them what I'm trying to do and why I'm doing it, then having a screen like this, which I can just quickly show them on the back here what's going on, um, you know, with a, with a LUT dropped on it so then it looks really nice. Uh, it usually really helps to win them over to helping me with whatever I'm trying to film. So I find that incredibly helpful and really nice um, little side benefit to using a screen like this when I'm uh, traveling around the place. So for a relatively small add-on, the Ninja 5 with this particular combo offers huge benefits, which um, I will always be using on projects like this. So to conclude, I think personal projects are a great way to to develop your filmmaking skill set and are a really fun thing to do on the side of uh, core work you might be doing. So um, yeah, think up a concept. It doesn't have to be exotic. It doesn't have to be remote. It can be really simple and local, but um, something which is allowing you to learn something and challenge yourself one way or another. Um, I think it's a great way to learn and I'm looking forward to jumping into my next project. Thank you.